fight night in Lockport. We'll learn more when we return. Welcome back to West New York Tonight. My name's Tom Christie. And we're with Amir Abdallah from Abdallah's Gym, or Team Abdallah, I always refer to it as. Uh, Amir, welcome back. Thank you for having us. Uh, we're going to talk about another Fight Night 6 in Lockport coming up in February, but who's with us here? Introduce the, the cast of characters here. This All is right. Great. I have three of my team members with me. To my left here is our uh, junior Olympic welterweight champion, 147 pounds. He's undefeated so far in his amateur career, Adam Burkhart. Uh, next to him is our Silver Gloves champion. Uh, Stevie is a veteran of five amateur fights. I guess that's not really a veteran, but uh, uh, it's Steve Intihar. And then next to him, that's the one and only number one ranked in New York State Silver Gloves champion, Stone Cold Cody Butler. And Cody has been a caller into this show every time we've had Cody has been. That's, uh, I'm, I'm yes, proud to meet you, Cody. Thanks for coming. Now, what are the age groups here, and what are we doing? It's February 24th. 24th. February 24th. It's going to be at the uh, Lockport High School, which is a great venue to have it, in the new gymnasium. Um, and we're going to have fights. Cody is at nine years old right now. Ten years old. Nine? Nine. nine. I could get mixed up. We need confirmation on that. Yeah. Yeah, Cody's it's nine. That went so by we'll weight have... classes anyway. It does. It's <laughs> weight and age. Okay. And that's what makes it a little bit safer. Um, and uh, I have another one of my juniors, uh, Gabe Zell Jr. He'll be making his kickboxing debut. So we've got kids from eight and nine years old all the way up to seniors. Uh, my oldest one will probably be about 32, 33 years old. Now, Fight Night 6, we, it seems like only a little while ago we were on the second or, or I think at Lockport Mall, wasn't it? Yeah, we had the uh, first one at Best Western, second, third, and fourth at the Lockport Mall, the fifth one at the Keenan Center, and now the sixth one at the high school. Have they all been the age groups, or is this a new venture having multiple age groups? Nope, it's um, always been these age groups, always been you know divided up into ages and uh, weights, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Now, have you always had multiple age groups oh, yes. yourself in the gym? Ah, uh, well, when we first started, we had uh, one fighter. It was actually uh, just Brian Burkhart, Adam's older brother. And then Mikey joined, and then we slowly started building, and now we've got a team of uh, 11, 12 uh, competitors right now, active just competitors that, um, that fight which we consider our team. Has it gotten easier to put a card together the sixth time compared um, to the first and second? Experience-wise, yeah, it helps a lot. I learned from a very good promoter, Jimmy Ralston, up in, La in uh, Buffalo, and uh, you know he taught me the ropes a little bit. And uh, yeah, experience-wise it goes, but you know, Tom, every single fight there's always a surprise. Yeah. Every single fight there's cancellations. Every single fight there's something to happen. Yeah. I mean, you can't really say there's a smooth show, although thank God we've had great turnouts, and the shows have turned out to be fabulous. You've had almost near sellouts, right, yeah, each time? Yeah, every single show. We're averaging 1,200 per show. And I'm jumping around here, but if you do come down, there's food and beverages. It's oh, yeah. A, it's a whole evening. A uh, good friend of ours, you know, Mikey Molinaro from Molinaro's Restaurant, they take care of the concessions, and um, we're grateful that they're going to be helping us out, and hopefully they'll be partners with us uh, in all the fight nights that we hold. Now, what's going to happen on that night? What, what do you have scheduled so far? Uh, right now, we've got both kickboxing and boxing. We've uh, got a couple of professional box, er, I'm sorry, kickboxing fights. We're working on the professional boxing. That's coming soon. Um, uh, like I said, our... And I guess what are the designations, you know, professional... Uh, not professional. I mean, if I got well, in a ring with it, anybody, it would be serious. Sure. So one sounds not as serious as the other, but well, I'm they're both all very serious. serious. They're yeah. both very serious, amateur and professional. Just the difference, professional, is that now you're going up in the ranks. Now it's where it really counts. You know, this is where you can really get rated. Um, like we were talking about last show, no headgear, uh, lighter gloves, longer rounds. Not longer rounds. I'm sorry, longer distance rounds. Uh, so it's a little bit more serious. Amateur is the, the learning stages, and professional is the Almost like you could say amateur is the schooling, professional right. is the career right. that you go about having. Right. Uh, so um, that's what we're looking to have, kickboxing and boxing. We've got some real good fighters. Um, the one that I think is very highly anticipated, there's actually two of them. Um, besides our own fighters, our own stable of fighters, um, Mike Ford, Brian Burkhart, Adam Burkhart, Ryan Bad, Stevie Intar, Cody Butler, and Gabe Zell, and our uh, Italian stallion, Tony Caruba, besides them, uh, we have coming back uh, Frankie D'Ambra, and if you remember, Frank's the one that really shocked Lockport when he stopped Desmond Price in the first round of the last fight, um, and it was supposed to, it was for the New York State Light Heavyweight Championship, 
and you know Desmond was a very uh, high favor and your local hero and Frankie ended up stopping him in the first round so he's coming back I spoke to him last night he'll be on the show uh, we've got another gentleman which is really going to be fun to watch his name is Ed Burris if anybody's familiar with the kickboxing he used to do the K1 fighting and uh, now he does Muay Thai, which does leg kicks and what elbows and knees. What are those two? What's the difference? K1, K1 is it's pretty much what it is. Like the best of the best heavyweights okay. that fight full contact. They kick to the legs. They use the knees. They use the elbows. Uh, this guy is seven foot one, two hundred and fifty pounds. Wow. He's a big man. We saw him fight in Pennsylvania, and he uh, ended up knocking his opponent out of the uh, ring. Uh, he was pretty much out of it. I mean, he wow. was unconscious for a couple I mean, of minutes. He just kicked him right out, I bet. Yeah, you know, uh, technically wise, like I was telling a lot of people, he's not the greatest fighter, but someone like that, when he hits you, <laughs> you're going to yeah. feel it. There's a little bit more room for error done. in his oh, game. Oh, yeah, sure. And it is all technique. I mean, anybody could beat that guy. The of course. Old, not David As a matter of fact, we were talking about it last night. The uh, gentleman he fought in Pennsylvania, it was a very close fight. It was very close. A lot, uh, two of the three judges had it for the other guy until Ed just caught him, you know, with a nice roundhouse kick and just stopped him. It just oh. takes one punch when you're heavyweight. Right. One right. kick in that instance. Adam, I, I didn't catch how many fights you've been in. I've had five. Five? What's it like climbing into the ring and, and you'll be there on the card on the 24th? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, are there butterflies? There's always butterflies, sure. I, I, oh, yeah, I guess. Course. But, you know, you, you pack the house each time you have one here in Lockport. What's it like? You climb in, the other guys there. I mean, take us through that a little bit. It's great fighting in front of the hometown, you know. Yeah. It's, you get a lot of butterflies the first time you fight in front of the hometown, but once you get in there and you got all those people cheering for you, it's such a great relief. Were all your other fights out of town then? So you got to warm up and be nervous on the road, so to speak? Yeah, I had two fights in Lockport, and my first three fights were out of town. Out of town, yeah. yeah. It, it's, so it's good coming back, but it wasn't bad being away either. Yeah. So you could at least hone your, your skills. Did you learn a lot from that first fight till now? Do you, I mean, yeah. the experience yeah, I, is everything? Yeah. It's a lot. How, how much do you train? I know you have to keep in good shape all, all year round, but before February 24th, how do you have to step it up? Uh, six days a week in the gym and about six or seven running every morning before school and on the weekends wake up at about seven o'clock, go running, yeah. and then just keeping a strict diet. What, yeah, diet is important too, right? Because it, 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 how, are you in a tight weight? Do you have to keep weight down or are you right in the middle where you're I'm, fine? I'm just fine. You're fine, you're cruising yeah. on the weight? Steve, how many fights have you had? I have five. Same? Yeah. Um, again, fought two in Lockport? Uh, yeah. Was it better fighting at home or on the road or different? Yeah, the crowd really gets you motivated Does it? Home. You just want to go out there and knock your opponent out, but if you don't, <laughs> it's about right. You know, you get what you get. And how long are the rounds? The three rounds? Uh, yes. <coughs> Two-minute rounds? Stevie and Cody fight three rounds. Adam and Stevie fight uh, two minutes, and Cody fights one-minute rounds. Cody, how many fights have you had? I've had three so far. Three? All hometown or away? Uh, Two hometown and one away. Yeah. And again, the age group, I mean, it, 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 you're nine years old, ten? Nine. Nine. I mean, there's some kids that are nine that are big and some that aren't. And, yeah. You know, have you fought a guy that you just, like, looked up at when you got to the middle? No. No? They've all been about the same height. Yeah. Oh, how are the butterflies, or don't you have them? Oh, I get them all the time. Yeah. And they're really bad, too. Like, the first time, I almost threw up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's not uncommon. I mean, I read where professional athletes throw up before. Yeah. I mean, Jim Kelly oh, threw up before every football game he ever played, he said. Um, so, I mean, that's not uncommon, but it, it's still, you don't get used to it, do you? No. The butterflies. They go away, like, right when you get in the ring. Right. And yeah. you're getting ready. But then before, when you're in the locker room and when you're at home and you're eating breakfast, you... <laughs> You're really nervous. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, one, yeah, once you start hitting each other, you're in it. You yeah, focus. it all you, goes away. Right. Uh, Amir, again, three minute, two minute rounds, three rounds. That's for most of the amateur fights. For the professional fights, we're looking at uh, five to eight rounds. Again, depending on what we can make. Right now, um, our, um, the, the fights are really tentative. Um, but we have a couple of real good fights yeah. lined up. As always, you know, all the fight nights, we have great fights. Right. And it's just like, I, I think, like comedy or hockey or whatever. When you go, it's much different than just watching on TV. Oh, yeah. It's, it, a, it's, it's an amazing riot. difference. It's great. You know, and we have a great, great crowd that comes up. And you and get real close. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's a, it's a real nice family atmosphere. And that's what's different about a lot of events that boxing um, uh, advocates is that um, families are brought into this, right. you know, and, and um, you can just see everybody having a great time together, so right. it's really nice. It's a really nice atmosphere. Well, we've got a call in line one. Let's see what they say. All right. No, there's no call in line one. All right, maybe not. Maybe they hung up. Um, we were talking about in other times when it's a family event, of course. Yeah. 
Now, are, are these guys all uh, kickboxers or just boxers? Um, just boxers? We actually, all of three of them started in kickboxing, right. and then all three of them have changed to boxing. Right. Um, just because we have a little bit more action with boxing, we can get them a little bit more, a couple more fights. Um, kickboxing, unfortunately, right now, you know, the, the market and the promoters aren't doing as much as we'd like them to do, although it is starting to come back. Right. Um, but yeah, all three of them are doing boxing right now, and they still can kick. Right. Well, it, most of them can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't encourage that during a boxing match. No, you do well, want to forget yeah, that. Yeah, if, you know, if it gets a little rough in there, we uh, go ahead and throw a kick or two in there. Do, you know, do you guys find an undisciplined opponent sometimes just you know, reverting back to survival and doing things that aren't legal in the ring? Yeah, and and they quickly get caught by that. Cody, have you run into somebody that started fighting for his life, kicked yeah. you or something? No, not, not kicked me. No. no. Just look at that unscarred face. It won't be long. <laughs> That's a handsome we'll little man. Yeah, right? we'll see. We'll see some road wear. But now we we're talking about that. There's a lot of protection you wear. Yes. And it's actually one of the safer sports, if not oh, the yeah. safest sport. Tell it's me a little bit about that. It's one of the safest sports. Um, and again, this is one thing that a lot of people don't really understand is. You know, two guys going in there and fighting, but that's not how it is. You know, it's two guys going in there and using their abilities, uh, their mental and physical capabilities in the ring, and it's really a, a big mental challenge. You can ask these guys. I think okay. boxing is 80% um, mental. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, they have 12-ounce um, headgear on. They have 12-ounce regulated USA boxing gloves, a mouthpiece, a protective groin protector. Um, kickboxers have shin pads and uh, uh, foot gear. Um, and it's very protected. There's a referee in there. There's one referee for every two participants. Right. That's it's a lot more than you can say for a lot of other sports, you know? Right. Um, do you guys find, any, any one of the three, you find uh, um, that, that you like boxing more than the kickboxing because you can concentrate? And when you're there, you don't really get slammed in the head constantly. I mean, it's a mental game, like you're saying. You don't really take a lot of shots to the head right away. Well, I like it a little bit better because it's less to worry about, really, because... Right. <laughs> Which you can focus on the... Yeah, focus yeah. just on the hand so you don't have to worry about getting kicked. How, how far does the uh, headgear come down? So, I mean, I know you can see out. Different headgears are different, um, but most of them come right around your eyes and come straight down, then down around underneath your chin. Uh, but they do have a new headgear, or it's a headgear that really used for sparring, but they sometimes they allow it. It has cheek protectors, right. and it comes out to here. Sparring headgear is a little bit different, it's a little bit more protective, a little bit thicker. Can you still take a knockout blow with all that oh, padding Oh, absolutely. Up? Yeah. Have you ever seen Mike Ford fight? No. Oh, Stop boy. nine out of the 11 guys he's fought, knocked with him out. With full headgear. Oh, yeah. Well, let's take a quick break, because I want to okay. go back to the safety and what it's like in the ring, but we sure. need to take a quick break. Right. You're watching West New York tonight. We're talking about Fight Night 6 in Lockport on February 24th with Team Abdallah. We'll be right back. On the big highway of life, there's only one safe place for kids. Backseat, baby. The front seat's not the best to drop out. Backseat, baby. Don't want that big old bag to pop out. Backseat, baby. Put that food in the backseat. Backseat, baby. And at the kitchen, never be out. Here to remind you to put them behind you. Backseat, baby. Wow. Look at him. Backseat, baby. You stay alive even when I drive. When the heavens thunder, when the nation calls, Come on. you can make a difference and be a part of it all. Find yourself in the Army National Guard, serving one weekend a month and two weeks a year, and you'll find an extra paycheck, money for college, and all the adventure you can handle. Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. In the Army National Guard, you can... You. See more smoke. Smoke detector. <laughs> and I see more smoke coming from that toaster. <gasps> Thanks for warning us, Seymour. I hate smoke. <laughs> so whenever I see it, I make this noise to warn you. Because where there's smoke, there may be fire. Be cool about fire. Be cool. Welcome back to West New York tonight. My name's Tom Christie. We're talking about boxing, and it's Fight Night 6 in Lockport, February 24th. Actually, Amir, uh, with Team Abdallah. Amir Abdallah is with us tonight. And uh, what time is it? How can you get tickets? And I know there's a sponsor you wanted to talk about. Yeah, February 24th um, is the date of the event, which is about three or four weeks away from today. 
Um, it's going to be at the Lockport High School. The doors open at 6 o'clock. Fights start at 7. You can get your tickets uh, either at the gym on Pine Street, uh, our gym, or you can get them at Passeri's Barbershop on Walnut Avenue, or you can get them at the Bewley Building at Lockport Office Supply, Service, and Equipment, uh, Ron Kowalewski's place um, downtown. You can buy them there also. The one fighter I forgot to mention that will be on the card, and he's be making his uh, comeback, is the Bulldog, the Lockport Bulldog, Nate Hopkins. He'll be joining the rest of the crew, uh, Mike Ford, Brian Adam Burkhart, Ryan Bad, Steve Intahar, Cody Butler, and Gabe Zell Jr. Okay, let's see who's online while we fix our phone good. troubles here. Hi, caller, you're on. Thanks for calling. Hey, Amir, this is Big Bill, your ring announcer. Yes, Bill, hey, how you it doing? sounds like a ring announcer. I beg your pardon? You sound like a ring announcer. It's a good call. <laughs> Thank you. Great voice. Um, Fight Night 6, I'm excited, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, Nate Hopkins, because as much as I like all the fighters, that guy, he's special. I really enjoy watching him. Thank you. Um, there was something I wanted to mention about uh, Fight Night 6. Um, Lockport's been very good to a young man named uh, David DeAngelis, right. who's been a recipient of the David Fund. And uh, Amir would never say this himself because he's <laughs> far too gracious for it, but Amir's the one Thank that you. started all of that. Um, Thank you, Bill. David DeAngelis has cerebral palsy. He's a little four-year-old boy. And uh, Amir, out of the kindness of his heart, took him in and brought him to his fights and uh, helped us to raise money. And since then, um, some of our other boxing programs in the area, such as uh, Dom Esposito and Billy Hackmer, wrestling shows, have done things. We're trying to get this little boy um, a wheelchair van, and uh, we're going to have a benefit in Niagara Falls on February 18th at the Elks, which okay. America can give anybody information on if they want to know about it. Okay. But uh, I publicly wanted to thank you, Amara, for doing this for that young man. and. Um, I understand he's the newest member of Team Abdallah. He is, and at the fundraiser dinner, we'll be awarding him his shorts, his team trunks, and his uniform. But, uh, you know, Bill, it was you that introduced me to him, so the thanks should go to you. Well, I just look forward on uh, February 24th to seeing David come out in his uh, Team Abdallah uniform, and we're going to have boxing trivia, and we're going to have some great fights, and I can't wait to see Frank D'Ambra again and Mike Ford. And Nate. I mean, they, these are exciting fights. I mean... A lot of places, I've been involved in amateur boxing for years, and one thing I like about Amer shows, you see a lot of knockouts. Oh, yeah? A lot, I, I, in, in my opinion, a higher ratio than you do with a lot of other shows. Of the traveling guys, I hope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is that a good comment or a bad comment about Amir's training tactics? Be. Well, I mean, Amir's a great trainer, and that's, you know, his kids always come out on top when you see these knockouts, usually. And uh, that speaks something for uh, the training and for the ethics that are in his gym. I mean, uh... When you go to Amir Abdallah's gym, you don't hear profanity. You don't Absolutely see kids not. standing around uh, being lazy and uh, drinking soda pop and goofing off. These kids go in there. They work. They work hard. It's very organized. And these guys have a winning attitude. They have a work ethic. And that's why you see the results you see. That's right. So when people come out to uh, Team Abdallah fights, they get their money's worth because they not only get entertainment, they get knockouts, you know, and... We get our hometown pride because Lockport gets wins, lots of wins. Right. That's right. So, Thank uh, you, Bill. I think between uh, what we've done for David DeAngelis, Team Abdallah, and for the general state of boxing, we've got a lot to be thankful here in Lockport. Sure, Amir, we can thank you for that, too, because you were the man who brought boxing and kickboxing back to this area. Thank you, Bill. Bill, thanks for calling. Okay, thanks a lot. We'll see you on thanks the 24th. Have a nice night. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was a great call. It was. So you hear some of that with sports, and, and again, I, I, it doesn't surprise me that you don't say that about <laughs> helping other people because you wouldn't. That was a very <clears throat> honest call from what I know. He's a good man. Yeah. He helps us out with every single show. He doesn't well, ask for anything. Let's see what, who's online too here. Hi, right. call. You're on. Yeah, I got a question. Um, you guys have talked about the safety of the kids and the hair yeah. they wear and the groin area. But what about the other parts of the body that are unprotected, like your major organs, your heart? You're taking uh, rapid punches constantly to the heart, the chest area. The, okay. uh, the kidney shots, which can cause uh, um, urinary infections, blood in the system. Right. Now, are these kids aware of the long-term body injuries internally, of what can happen, and are the parents aware of it, and what do you do to protect even more of those right. uh, areas that can get, you know, damaged. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for calling in. If you don't mind, I'd like to keep them on the line. Yeah, let me keep, you want to stay on there, caller? Sure. Just okay, great. Any questions. Thank you for calling <laughs> in. Um, the danger to the sport, it is no higher than any other sport. Boxing is on an amateur level. 
out of the 30 top major sports is ranked 27th of the safest. Um, walking down the street, you can have a heart attack. Going to school, unfortunately these days you can get shot. Football, hockey, I mean when you compare them to sports like that, softball, it's a lot more dangerous. Remember, you're taking shots to the heart, you take or to the uh, body with padded gloves. Now, I'm not sure if you're ever familiar with the uh, boxing gloves, but they're very well padded. Um, and again, the ratio to the referee to the fighters is one to every two. So it is a very safe sport. As far as the parents being concerned about it, absolutely. I mean, parents know what boxing is about, and they see their kids training in the gym. Um, it's not as uh, brutal, and it's not as uh, barbaric as a lot of people think it is. It's a very controlled, very safe sport. As far as, I mean, how it affects the body, what sport really doesn't affect the body? I mean, is your heart, uh, when you take a shot to the heart, I mean, I'm not sure if I understand if you're talking about the duration of training on how it affects your heart, but as far as cardiovascular training, boxing is superior. It's an, it's an exquisite um, physical sport that people are doing for recreation as well as competing. So um, uh, as far as the heart's concerned, you're in, you're in absolutely tremendous shape. And these people aren't just people that are coming off the street. You take a body shot, that's after doing hundreds and hundreds of sit-ups. Um, with football, you're, you're hit from 11 different sides. You're not hit from one side with one referee in front of you. You've, you're on the field with a bunch of different people. Hockey, you've got sticks in their hands. Um, and, they're, and they don't carry any other equipment okay, on their body, but when you take a puck to the face, or how many boxers don't have teeth compared to hockey players um, on an amateur level or a professional level? Uh, so as far as safety goes, um, I understand your call and I understand your question. It's a very good question with a lot of people have the questions about, but it is a very safe sport. Uh, when you even go back to the ethics of the game, um, if you go inside of our locker room, and I can speak uh, confidently about my team before a fight, and you can hear what we're talking to our fighters, and then you go inside of a football or a hockey or another team's locker room and hear what they're saying, you'll see the level of, uh, really, if you want to call it uh, how barbaric they are. I mean, our idea is to go out there, do what you've been taught, not go out there and crush the other guy, to go out there and be a good sport about it. You see before the game, before the round rather, after the round, they're touching gloves, they're hugging each other, which again is a lot more to say than what you can say for other sports. Caller, is that to answer some of your questions? Yeah, but you were referring to the uh, kids, and that's what I was referring about, the kids sure. and the thing, but our kids and the sports they play though, like hockey, you have to wear a headgear. You have to wear the face mask. Uh -huh. We have the shoulder pads, chest protector, the stomach guard all the way down with gloves and everything. They also get football, all the pads, your whole body is right. covered in all sports. Where a kid, you're leaving up you from your neck to your waist, is mm -hmm. bare open. And right. that's what I was uh, getting to. And I know you got the padded gloves, but the continued shots, continuously, continuously, I know you do ab workouts to build up the stomach, but continuous shots to the heart generates that heart to start beating faster. It could cause irregular heartbeats. And then you figure you start getting those kidney shots, you keep hitting them back there, and next thing you know, you're developing kidney problems. You're, you know, you're urinating blood. And that's, that's what right. You got talking about right. Okay, I understand right. your question, but you got to understand in hockey, there's body checks, in football, there's sacks and there's tackles. So there is contact in every single sport that you do. Um, as far as your heart taking a shot, there, if you've ever seen the glove, um, as long as your hand is halfway up to your waist, you're not going to get hit in the heart. Or if you do, again, it's very padded and it's very controlled. There isn't really that much to it. As far as kids urinating blood, uh, for the years that I've seen it, I've, uh, I've been in the sport, I have yet to see um, kids uh, urinating blood from amateur boxing, which is three two-minute rounds. It's very, very rare. Although I have seen plenty of football injuries, I have seen plenty of hockey injuries. And not to dog these sports, but just to compare and contrast them. Um, like it's, I said, it's a sport. It's a, it's a sport, and you can get hurt doing it just like doing anything else. I mean, there's dangers. Uh, if, if people were worried about things like that, they'd never leave their house, you know? And right. It's just a, it's a dangerous... Uh, every sport, you're taking some kind of a risk. Right. Caller, is that about right? I'm going to move along here. Okay. Okay, thanks for calling. I appreciate you calling. Okay. Uh, anybody... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, anybody that has any kinds of concerns or anything, I mean, I, I welcome all calls, and, I, and I'm glad that he called, because right. I know it's a lot on a lot of people's minds. I welcome that to come down, please come down and we'll sit down, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll share uh, a cup of coffee, you know, I'll, I'll be more than happy to come down to the gym right. and we'll talk about it, and I'll be more than happy to sit down and explain everything and show you statistics and show you paperwork. Right. On, uh, L let me ask the guys, you guys play other sports like basketball, football, even the playground stuff? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like with our friends and stuff, yeah. I mean, any more uh, contact between that and 
you know, t training and controlled hitting and... Yeah, I get hurt more playing other sports, honestly, because yeah. it's just, you know, it's not controlled as much as boxing is. Right. I would think the only valid concern anybody would have, not even valid, I'm not saying valid, real concern that people don't know about is, is the Muhammad Ali syndrome, that kind of thing, which are, those are the icons we see after sure, Muhammad Ali's got 30 years of... Muhammad Ali is suffering from Parkinson's disease, as is Michael J. Fox who is on Family Ties and who's been a comedian his whole life. So, yeah, uh, yeah granted, Mike, uh, Muhammad Ali took a lot more shots than, uh, yeah. than I mean, uh, certainly every Michael J. Fox. But, when you, I mean, yeah, they, they do have the effect. But how many football players have died from head injuries? Well, now we talk about dying, but you should see a lot of high school kids that have knee scars because they've torn up their knee, you know, turning the wrong way. I mean, I'm so those are the injuries we're talking fatality about. Fatality-wise, Tom? Yeah. Um, boxing has got the lowest, one yeah. of the lowest, I'm sorry, not the lowest, one of the lowest. Right. But it's a sport as every other sport is, and there's going to be risks. Let me take another call sure. on line one. Hi, caller, you're on. Yeah, this is Bill again, and I had a comment about that last uh, caller. I wonder if he's a NASCAR fan. I uh, watched some NASCAR races on television. There was a car crash. A tire flew from the wreck, went uh, into the audience, and uh, as a result, somebody was killed. Exactly. And uh, I, in all the fights I've been to, I've never seen a fan killed by a flying glove. Right. <laughs> I'd much rather take my chances in front of a mitt than some car going 300 miles an hour into a wall any day of the week. Right. As far as boxing goes, the referees are very, very highly trained. They, are. they watch the action very closely. They can tell, if, for instance, if uh, one of the fighters has given up and no longer has a will to be in there. Right. Well, let me stop you on that point, if you don't mind. The referee is there. He sees a kid taking two, three body shots. He'll step in. That's it. It's over. Right. How about in football when you have a pile on? Worst kid gets hit. Okay, he's hurt. Second kid right. jumps on. Third, fourth, fifth. When does it stop? After right. what? Bill, so, Bill, I'm just going to send you off, okay? Okay. Thanks, thanks for calling Bill. back, Bill. Yep. Um, exactly. And we're talking about pre-fight, uh, not even conditioning, but exams. I mean, yeah. are you fit to fight today? They have and then to pass post fight. Physical. They have to exam. Pass it's pretty highly regulated. And just like you can take a body shot that I can't, and I might be able to take a shot you can't. Exactly. There's genetic problems with my shoulder that aren't with yours. It's Absolutely. a sport. We're talking about a sport. Still a very valid call. Very valid. Very valid and call. I welcome it and I appreciate it. A lot of questions about everything, body sure. wise. And, and we're physical. welcome. This is what we want to happen. We want to educate people a little bit on the sport. Let's hope this isn't the same guy calling back and Bill <laughs> call back. But we'll take one more call here on line two. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, I'm the mother of the nine-year-old. Cody! Oh, Cody Butler. We oh, like Mom. Cody, by the way. <laughs> and I just wanted to call in uh, regarding the man that called regarding the safety. And as the parent of a nine-year-old, you can imagine it's very hard to watch him be involved in this sport. And I just wanted to say we totally trust a mayor Thanks. with Cody in his training. And when he gets in the ring, I know that he's safe. And I just wanted to express that and thank Amir for everything that he's done. Great. Thank hey, you. Hey, thanks for calling. Okay. Thank bye you very much. Bye-bye. Very supportive family. Yeah, and, and it does make a difference, I think, Amir. Um, I know that you don't want to talk about stuff you do, like the charity work you do and such like that. But there is that sense that your gym, it's different. I mean, kids are there, and they really learn a lot more than just boxing from each other even because there's an attitude yeah. uh, of success and, and discipline and that kind of thing. So that really makes a difference. I like to bring my, you know, what I've been raised with, the values, and I thank God day and night, you know, that my dad was so strict on me and, and, and we were so disciplined, you know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the greatest person in the world. I don't claim to be, but what I try to instill in my kids is that, that, that family kind of values and, and the discipline and the respect. That's so important. Like we train with pride, honor, respect. Right. That's the three most important things. Without that, I don't want you. Anymore. Right. Well, let, let's first go. We only have like 10 more seconds. Sure. Tell me the date again, where people can get tickets, right. how much. we got to go. Fight night four, February 24th, to Lockport High School in the new gym. Uh, fight start at 7, doors open at 6. Our gym on Pine Street, Viserys Barbershop, for Lockwood Office Supply and Service at the Bewley Buildings where you can get tickets. They're on sale right away. Hope to see you there. It's going to be a great event. Food, God beverages, bless. you come Thank you very much. You're, Any you'll questions, be taken care of. Please give me a call at the gym. It's in the phone book. Okay. Or at home. Guys, thanks for coming. It was fantastic. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.